Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Anatomy. And today let's talk about skull norma some more. Let's look at the norma frontalis. So as you all know, the skull normas are the different views by which we study the skull or the cranium, bony cranium. And we have five different normas. The norma frontalis is the view from the front of the face. The norma verticalis is when you study the skull from the top. We have the normal lateralis, which allows you to study the skull from the lateral aspects. Then we have the normal occipitalis, which gives a posterior view. And then lastly, we have normal basalis, which allows you to see the skull from below. So these are the five skull normas. And let's look at the normal frontalis. We'll start with the bones forming it, the important sutures that we see here, and the important features. So the bones forming the normal frontalis are many. The most prominent one is the frontal bone, which is seen at the very top. Then we have the two nasal bones in midline. Immediately lateral to that, we have the two maxillae, the right and the left maxillae. Lateral to the maxillae, we have the zygomatic bones, the left and the right ones. And then we have the mandible. So these are the main bones forming the norma frontalis. Let us look at the sutures. Between the frontal and the nasal bones, we have the frontonasal suture. So that is the frontal and the nasal. And here we have the frontonasal suture. Between the two nasal bones, we have the nasal suture. And between the frontal and the maxillary, we have the frontomaxillary suture. So that is the frontal on top and the maxillary bones below. And here we have the frontomaxillary sutures. Like I mentioned, there is an internasal suture between the two nasal bones here. And then we have the zygomaticomaxillary suture, which is between the zygomatic bones and the maxillary bones. So those are the zygomatic bones and the maxillary bones. And the suture can be seen there in the norma frontalis. We also have the frontozygomatic suture, which is a small suture visible just lateral to the orbit. This is, suture is found between the frontal bone and the zygomatic bones. And let us now look at the openings or the cavities seen in the norma frontalis. So the most obvious cavity that can be seen is the, are the two orbital cavities. We also have two nasal cavities here in the norma frontalis with the nasal septum in between. What are the other features of norma frontalis? The superciliary arches represent the eyebrows in the living. We also have the two borders of the orbit, the supraorbital margins on top and the infraorbital margins below, which are here. Further down, we have the alveolar processes of the maxillae, which house our teeth. And among the maxillary alveolar processes, we have certain landmarks. There is something called the canine eminence, which is a bulge or a protuberance seen above the maxillary canines on either side. And there are two depressions on either side of the canine eminences. So the depression lateral to the canine eminences are called the canine fossae. And the depression seen medial to the canine eminences are called the incisive fossae. What are the foraminae that we see on the norma frontalis? Before that, we'll see the other landmarks. We have the glabella, which is this point between your two eyebrows. And then we have the depression immediately before the bulging of the nose, which is the nasion. We also have the superior orbital fissure. For that, you have to look into the orbital cavity. Those are the superior orbital fissures. Also seen within the orbital cavity are the inferior orbital fissures. We also have the anterior nasal spine in midline center and projecting up from the anterior nasal spine we have the bony nasal septum here what are the foraminae that are seen in the norma frontalis the supraorbital foraminae or notch is seen here and it lodges the supraorbital nerves and vessels the frontal or the supratrochlear notch is seen slightly medial to the supraorbital notch and below the orbit, we have the infraorbital foraminae, which allow the passage of the infraorbital vessels and nerve. In the mandible, we can see the mental foraminae through which pass the mental nerves. Another interesting thing to note is that the supraorbital foramina, the infraorbital foraminae, and the mental foramina, all of them lie in the same vertical line. So that is one easy way in which to remember them. 
we also have the zygomatico facial foramenae in the zygomatic bone. So those are the features of the norma frontalis. If you enjoyed the class, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for further normas in the coming weeks. Thank you so much.